Welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and I have two guests today. I've got Hikmatulu Tula Sherza from the, uh, the Thunder Bay Masjid. 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 All right, thank you. And Rob Van Wick. No. Yes, from the uh, Lakehead Unitarian Fellowship. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank Thanks you. for having us. So, Rob, let's start with you. Um, you are, I think, the chair of the Ken Morrison Lectures that is sponsored by the Unitarian Fellowship. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, thanks, uh, Steve. Uh, the Ken Morrison was a, uh, an important and, and beloved figure at Lakehead Unitarian Fellowship uh, for many years. Um, he had a history of engaging the tough questions. What, for example, one of his favorites was, what, what are the limits of tolerance? Uh, at which point do we have to stand up and say no? Um, and, and That's such a tough one right now. I'm already <laughs> kind of going, we better all be standing up and saying no just about now. But sorry, <laughs> Rob, go off go ahead. <laughs> That's right. I wonder what he would say in this day and age. But when, when he died uh, prior to 2010, um, he asked that the fellowship set up a series of lectures, which we've called the Ken Morrison Lectures, the sort of mini Massey Lectures of Thunder Bay. Um, each lecture has a, a, a common theme. In, in other words, it addresses a big idea or a hard question of our time. And in fact, the first uh, lecture in 2010 by the Reverend Hugh Walker was about the limits of tolerance. And we've gone on with other uh, uh, topics. Uh, the, uh, 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 well, in 2012, we had uh, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal relations in, in Thunder Bay. In 2014, we had the uh, Evelyn Forger of uh, Manitoba, of Winnipeg, talking about guaranteed annual income. And you know, here uh, you guys were definitely before your time there because Evelyn has become quite a, a public figure and the uh, you know guaranteed annual income, now basic income, has become a popular topic both provincially and federally. So yes, people, it's need come to, here. people need yeah. to, to follow up on the Ken Morrison lecture series here. Yeah. And last year we had a very controversial figure named uh, by the name of uh, Reverend uh, Greta Vosper of West Hill United Church in Toronto. And she's uh, been a proponent of progressive Christianity, which has caused all sorts of waves in, um, in Christian circles and particularly in the United Church of Canada. And uh, I guess the story's not over on her. I think, well, this year we have uh, Hikma shares that, uh, and um, he may cause a few waves too, but I hope in, in uh, more, well, in another direction. Right on. So when, uh, when does this lecture take place? What, uh, can anyone come? How does that work? Anyone can come. Uh, I would say it would be an adult lecture. Children might not uh, um, uh, enjoy it as much, but it's uh, on Friday, May 12th, at 7.30 p.m. at Superior Collegiate and Vocational Institute. That's the new high school on High Street. And uh, it's free will admission. And uh, we hope to see lots of people there. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the uh, background on the Ken Morrison lectures. Uh, we have a committee of people that meet once every week or two weeks throughout the winter. And we finally found Hikma. And uh, that made our job a lot easier, and then we could focus on actually uh, 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 producing the uh, the lecture. Well, great. So, so Hikma, so you're going to be the featured speaker coming up uh, next week. Now, let's get a little bit of your own personal background. Um, some of your early days. Where did you grow up, and and when? How did you end up in Thunder Bay? So I grew up in. Um Toronto, uh, Scarborough, more specifically. I always highlight that. Um, it's a specific part of Toronto. 
the Some call, people the say call Scarberry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, I, I came to Tanah Bay. Um, I grew up, uh, I memorized the Quran, and that kind of led me to kind of. You memorized the Quran. Yeah. The entire Quran. Oh and my gosh! <laughs> Incredible. And, Sorry, uh, but it's okay. like oh, and at I can that hardly time, memorize a poem. I mean, you know. And at that time, I actually didn't know Arabic. Uh, I just memorized it verbatim. Um, so I actually really want to know the translation of this. That kind of propelled me to learning uh, the translation of it and, and learning um, a deep, going deeper into the sciences of the Quran. And um, eventually, um, I've been studying for a decade now. Three years ago, I came to Thunder Bay. A friend of mine said, uh, at that time, I was actually studying online. And I was kind of more mobile than where I could have been. So I decided to come to Thunder Bay and uh, serve the community here. And so how did you end up? Like, like someone phoned you and said, come to Thunder so Bay? I, I, and you just I had said, a friend, okay. So I had a friend like, who, uh, I, had a friend who I, I was memorizing the Quran with. His name is Ayub. Um, he actually just finished law school here in Thunder Bay. So he was here in Lakehead University. And um, uh, we actually, for a long time after high school, didn't really stay in touch. But thanks to Facebook, um, he messaged me one day. I was actually in Florida at the time. Uh, and he messaged me and said, you know, what are you doing? I said, um, I'm studying online at the moment. He goes, so uh, there's an opportunity here to serve the community. Would you like to come here and serve the community? So I said, yeah, I, was, well, you, I could have studied anywhere. So I said, yeah, sure, why not? Um, so I came here, I think, in May 2013, I believe. If I got the date correct. And so what exactly is an imam? So imam is uh, the leader of a community. So the imam could uh, have multiple um, functions. So some, if I'm there at the mosque, I could I would lead the prayer. Uh, we pray five times a day, so I lead the congregation in prayer. Um, another um, function of an imam is to lead the Friday sermons, so to give a lecture and then lead the prayer afterwards, and also just to be a community person, a community organizer, a community connector. So that's generally what the imam is to serve the community. And how how does the the community choose the imam, or is the imam Somehow, so the, the appointed from somewhere else. So there's no clergy in Islam in the sense that you know people are appointed uh, from a higher structure. It's more, um, perhaps, um, I would say that's more in North America. I'm not sure how things work uh, in the Middle East or in Afghanistan and in, 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 in South Asia. I haven't been there. I haven't lived there, so I'm not sure how the imams are appointed there. Um, I do know that generally. Um, in some parts in the Middle East, uh, the government has more of a uh, more control in who is the, is the imam. Uh, but in North America, I know it's 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 it's, it's every mosque has uh, would would kind of interview the imam, and there's there's kind of a I would say uh, an understanding of you know if I, if I tell them I studied uh, here, um, with one or two phone calls, I can confirm if I studied there. Um, especially a lot of our studies are, are, are private, so I, I go to a scholar one-on-one -on -one and I study with him a book, then I go to another scholar and study another book with, with that scholar. And so they would interview me and see if, I'm, uh, if I've studied, if I'm competent enough, and they'll go from there. All right. We need to take a short break. We'll be right back, but we'll find out much more about um, our mosque and, and the lectures coming up. Please stay with us. 